hair texture is all over the place. Everything. 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 I'm fabulous. I'm great. Thank you for asking. I'm giving you eyes tonight. You're gorgeous. I love the eyes. Thank you. How are you feeling, my friend? I'm loving it. I'm feeling good. I'm rap I'm rocking my rap today. Yes, let's go no. rap. Let's go thick hair. I see you no. managed to stuck to stick them in there. Yes. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to another live episode of Babs Comedy. I am Adrian, but you can call me Brandy Berg. Mm -hmm. I'm Adrian, but you can call me AB. Yay! And we have a missing Baps, Jillian. We do. Jillian is out tonight. She is out, but guess what? We are going to make her famous black rum punch. Will we make it too strong? Most likely. Is that yeah. okay? Yes. Yes. Hell yeah. The week that I've had. First of all, it's hump day. And I know most of you guys are probably uh, anticipating, excited, excited to watch this VP debate as well. I, I figured I need to mention this, get it out of the way. Say that you out know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Appreciate it. Out. We got to do what we got to do. Okay. Then, you know, get them out of the White House. Okay. All okay. right. That's what you gotta do. That's what you okay. gotta do. So we know some of y'all may be watching that now, but we're gonna put on this great show so you can watch this later on our stream. Yes. 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 So please do not forget to like and subscribe so you can see all of our content that we will be airing to all of you guys. All right. Beautiful. So Brandenburg, I say we just jump into the drink. Let's get it. Important. Yes. That is the main focus. Let's get it together. We're making some black, 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 black rum punch. Jillian's famous black rum punch. For those of you who are just joining, Jillian is out tonight. We are making her famous black rum punch. And you got to say black, 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 black rum punch. Black. All right, so let's get this. Let's get it started. Okay. But you I got ice. My ice is in here. We definitely need the ice. I decided to put my ice in our lovely Baps cup. Yeah, I'm gonna pour mine in our Baps cup after I shake. You know. Okay. So you go. Yeah, you're gonna shake. I'm gonna stir. Okay. 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 I don't, right. I don't want to make a mess, so I'm gonna be real bougie with it. Okay. Bougie, bougie. Well, so we talked about the ingredients, right? Yeah. No, but we okay. can. We have okay. Here we go. So we're having. Um, obviously, you need rum for Jillian's famous black rum punch. You can have a dark rum, a white rum, a spiced rum. So you have a white rum. I have a white rum, which is clear, but yes, it's white. Now I have black rum. So two different things. We're still going to get to the same destination. You feel yes, me? Yes. Drunk as fuck. Yes. Okay. All right. So we have our rum and then we have ice, obviously something to shake this bad boy in. We have a array of juices. Okay. So we can do a cranberry, an orange or a pineapple juice, or we can mix some shit in there. You feel I me? I see what you do. I'll, t I'll give you that array of juices and I'll stick to Oon juice with two flavors. Ooh, cran mango. Yes, let's cran get into it. I also like, I definitely saw your model come out. I'm here for it. Did you did you see the hand? Oh, the hand. You know, I always want to do, I can't wait till we actually do like a makeup tutorial because I always want to do the little <laughs> oh, as you can see the color. Right. <laughs> Which I understand why. I understand why they do that. It's to obviously get the camera into focus. Mm -hmm. But that is also like the coolest thing. I want to do it. <laughs> but anyway. You know you a legit um, YouTube tutorial or internet tutorial makeup artist when you got this down. Right. Once you, once you get this down, oh, Lord, you official, okay? 
<laughs> All right, so we got our rum. We have our array of juices, our un juice with an array of flavors. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we also need Le Grenadine. <laughs> It's okay. Oh, for y'all that don't know, I did have a happy hour at work before the show tonight. So, you know, my apologies. She hey, is a little, she's a little <laughs> saucy right now, okay? No, just, just slightly, just slightly. So, I feel like we should just put out a disclaimer. Uh, we we don't know no measurements, okay? No. Uh, <laughs> and you're not going to get no real measurements from us. <laughs> so, don't expect to get accurate measurements from us, okay? You're not, you're not. I feel like, it, so if you've been watching Babs Comedy Live for a little bit now, you remember the episode with the A-squared Margies. Mm, I, I recall that. A-squared Margies. When Adrian and Adrian make the drinks, your ancestors' measurement system is all you need. Mm. You know, little splash here, little po-po there, little, you know, put, put a little mo, put a little mo. That's gonna work. I feel like that is the foundation of what we did in the pro the prohibition days. You know what I mean? Because that that's how they determine those increments, those measurements by using those terms that we call, I like to say, a guesstimation. A guesstimation. A guesstimation. A guesstimation. All right. Yeah. All right. So. Let's start then. All right, so we got our ingredients. So let's start, and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just do what I feel. We're gonna do a double shot okay. of rum. Okay. I'm gonna do a double shot of I'm rum. So All right. You don't have your little measuring ingredient. If you don't have your measuring ingredient, ingredients. <laughs> if you don't so, have your measuring ingredient, I want you to look deep in your soul, okay? And I want you to just pour a little bit. Just pour a little bit more. And that's gonna work for you, okay? All right. Please, just to make it work right. You know what I mean? I like to go with the like if if you can see the if you can see the liquid, it's about enough. You know what I'm saying? When you pour, because if you got so much ice, yeah, too much oh. in here. Oh, yeah. Okay. But I'm gonna pour this into something different. So I'm gonna make a few drinks. Uh -huh. A few drinks in this one. Okay. Also, Brandon. You have to show everyone your measuring tool. That shit is huge as hell. Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Listen. A little tiny one don't mean anything. We're about to have fun, okay? <laughs> okay, and so uh, I want to, now, let's do, let's go to the grenadine, right? Okay, yeah. all right. So, go ahead. I'm gonna say, what is the grenadine for? To give it, it's like, Puck, like the pucker, the sweetness. Oh, okay. You know, so this is just red sugar. Pretty much. Okay. So we gonna measure the red sugar. Yeah, I wanna say it. Let's do a, an actual half a shot. We don't need a whole shot. We don't okay. need a whole shot. Well, you know, I did about five shots of the of the, of the stuff. Okay. Of the so I'm gonna do a little half, a little half. Okay. Because I'm making multiple drinks in here. Yes, you yeah. are. Jillian is so proud of us right now. Oh, she is. I know she is. She's so proud. And then you want to take your juice. Okay. Um, and I feel like you should just dab a little bit of every juice that you have. Pineapple. Okay, so my pineapple juice is literally from the pineapples. It's, oh. it's in the way. So I'm going to use a little bit. Yeah, it's homemade, girl. It's homemade pineapple juice. You squeezed that pineapple and made you some juice? Let me tell you, let me tell you something. I work hard when I want to. Oh, you know? I'm out here no. spilling. I'm okay. spilling. I'm going to do a little bit of the orange. Just a little, okay. little, little bit of that. Now I'm going to do a little bit more. Just a little bit. There you go. A little bit of that. You know, I'm going to put the top back on. And then I'm going to do my homemade pineapple juice. Homemade uh -huh. pineapple juice. I'm and jealous. You're yourself comment tell us how it's looking tell us how you like our measurement system i'm saying okay little homemade all right that'll work that'll work and i'm gonna just keep stirring okay. until, until you done because you got all the juices so I, I got a lot to do i'm gonna leave the cranberry out and then i'm gonna see how it is right so mm -hmm. put my top on Mm -hmm. My Hogwarts cup. 
house of Hufflepuff. You're welcome. Oh, Lord. Anyway, go ahead. And I'm going to shake. Y'all, y'all know the saying, keep your titties down. You shake. There you go. How are you looking at me crazy? Yeah, I'm like, can you keep those titties down? I think that's impossible. But anyway. Yeah, I bought this expensive ass bra. They better stay plain. Mm. All right. How's your smelling? Ooh, okay. It, I, I definitely smell the punch. I wish... Uh, I should probably like. I feel like I can throw some fresh pineapples, frozen <laughs> pineapples, an orange slice, a mango, or something. You know, they're in season. Okay, yeah. hold on one second. I'm pouring. I'm gonna pour. This smells very tropical for sure. I can't wait to to get into it. All right. Okay. 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 I'm, I might not wake up in the morning, but that's all right. You only live once. Okay. Mm. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Thank you, Jillian, for our Jillian's famous black round punch. Thanks, Jillian. Yay. Let's try it. Okay. I made, I made that. Okay. Let me tell you, you don't need to measure everything. That's on point. This, oh, wow. I like this. I might continue on with this one. Brady, Brady, you know this is like the first time both of us haven't like <laughs> the first sip of the drink. Yes, this drink is this beverage is on point. I like this. Okay, this I good. see you black. I see you black rum punch. Jillian's famous black rum punch. Mm. Yeah, this is quite tasty. If you made your rum punch, please comment. Please comment. Tell us how it's turning out. What did you do differently? Did you have spice rum? Did you have regular rum, white rum, black mm -hmm. rum? Did you reach into your heart for the measurements? Yes. I, I will say, I feel like I could have poured a little bit more. I did a double shot. I feel like no, I could have done a two and a half, two, three, two and three folks. Yeah, but it's okay though. This is good though. <laughs> okay. Anyway, would you like to introduce the topic for today? Yes. Yeah. Our topic that we will be discussing today and we've been promoting all week mm -hmm. is workplace, any, everything to go along with workplace, your favorite job, your, how many positions have you had, your best workplace story, your worst uh, workplace story. Your your favorite uh, firing story because I feel like I have I have a story about that. Um, best best tips on how to break up with your coworkers because you know you 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 have this relationship with your coworkers. You've been hanging out with your coworkers for so long. Yes. So let's get into it. Okay. So Brandy Berg, first off, tell me how many tell me what different positions that you've had. Also, don't nobody be recording this and get us both fired in the morning. That's not cool. But go ahead. I had to put that right. out there. Right. I ain't got a job. So uh, <laughs> listen, <laughs> guys. <laughs> listen, guys. So let's start with my very first, first job, and then I'll continue on. My very first job, and I feel like everybody's first job, especially to me I, during that time, um, was Jewel. Every it was a grocery store. I feel like everybody starts with either a grocery store bagging, pushing carts, bagging groceries, doing something. And you know, there is an art to bagging. Oh, yeah, to bagging groceries. And yeah. and I I am the I am one of the people that like to thank the the bagger. Like, man, thank you so much, man, because you took time. You know what I mean? you cared enough to remember that. Your you know, your fruits not smushed. Um, yes, first job. But I didn't have, I, I feel like throughout my whole career, I maybe had like 30 jobs. Okay. <laughs> I was, I was, a, I, I worked for Jewel twice in my life. Worked for Jewel <laughs> twice in my life. Uh, I was a grocer, uh, a bagger, a cart pusher. They really had like a, a job where all you do is push the carts. Yep, that was it. Okay. That was, that was yeah. And I was okay. like, uh, I, can somebody else do this? Like, y'all don't share gas no. from the parking lot? No, not at all. And then, you know what? 
this is the biggest misconception. A, a B, you are a tall woman as well. They like to assume that I can deal with heavy work and heavy lifted. I was out here, first of all, I have no upper, upper body strength. And they having me push it. I'm, I'm four, I think I was 15. Cause you know, you can get a, you can get a worker's permit. Oh, okay. I, I was 15 years old and, and I'm like, so you want me to push, y'all know I'm a girl, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Cause y'all think I can handle it. Cause I'm on a basketball team. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I completely gotcha. agree with you though, because when you're tall, they think, oh, you must be strong too. The little bit of muscle I got is going to hold these titties up 5'11 off the ground. You know what I mean? I'm I'm shaped like a pear, okay? Listen, I got a lot going on at the bottom, but I ain't got okay. nothing on top. So we've been a grocer, we've been a, a cart pusher. I've been a, uh, yeah, a cart pusher. I done work for, I worked for a sports authority where I was just giving everybody wrong information about shoes. <laughs> I, retail stores be acting like they be acting like they know how to train you and keep you well versed enough to act like you you know what the hell you're talking about but really you don't know what the hell you're talking about you don't know what you're talking about. you out here lying to these customers you don't know what you're talking about you're lying to customers i spent a summer i spent a summer working at old navy i was a folderer <laughs> they, they just had me in the stock. I said this whole time I thought that these jobs were separate. I mean, like they were together. Like if you're a cashier, you also fold clothes and do inventory and push the carts. <laughs> Apparently, all you do is that one job. Man, but I was I was a bank teller. I was a bank teller when I was 19. I was like, y'all gonna give me this job? You barely learn how to count at 19. Whose money you handling? Everybody, and that's why I got fired. Okay, listen. <laughs> and this is why I got fired. Okay, 19 years old. Out here, I'm just so pissed. Had I come into the bank to like open an account, talk about my finances, talk about the, the savings account, and 19 year old Brandon Berg was sitting like, I saw, I saw a friend that I just graduated high school with come in <laughs> and look at me like, Adrian. I was like, hey, what, what you doing here? He was like, I came to open up my uh, checking account. Can you help me? I'm like, actually, you don't want me. <laughs> I, I don't know what the hell I'm doing in here. I'm just here trying to get this check. I can't believe they hired me. Okay? That's that's how I was. I was a bank teller. And what else did I do? I worked for, I worked for CVS. Now, CVS, I felt like I've worked, I worked for CVS. Yeah, I worked for CVS for seven years. Any okay. any role, any role you you can apply for at CVS, I was that person. <laughs> <laughs> I done for, I worked my ass. I was damn near assistant manager when I left. Okay, <laughs> when I was done working at CVS. Okay, I will say though, Brandy Berg, if I went to CVS and I wanted to go to the skincare aisle and mm. you want to help me, I'd be like, I trust her. Oh. The, the kid, yes, the beauty manager. She she asked me to to help her out. I was like, girl, yeah, let me let me let me give these kids these little kids suggestions and stuff walking in because my face was flawless back then. Not that it's not now. Because it is, it but, is. But it was a little bit more youthful, you know, back then, you know. <laughs> but uh, I I I had done I. Yeah, I didn't. I think I feel like I worked for so many different retail jobs. I what was the job that um, you had when I met you. You were working at the place where you we, we had to go to the warehouse to have rehearsal one day. I think I <laughs> yes, I worked for I worked for this uh, medical company, this medical distribution company. Okay, yes, uh, yes. I yes. worked I worked there for a. Almost, I worked there for like six years. I, I had so many jobs. I don't even remember how many jobs. I promise you, I any job you could think of, I done did it except, except for being a waitress. 
I that never ever really. I oh my goodness, and that's where I made the most money. Oh. Let's let's go into let's go into in your that's job. So funny to me that that's the one thing you've never done because I did that never. so much. So so my. My very first job, I didn't have, I didn't know about these permits to work when you're young. I didn't have a permit. So they just paid me in cash under the table. It was a nice little thick envelope I got at the end of the week and I was very happy about it. But it was at Miller's, oh, let me let me not use names. It was at this uh, place where they make beer. <laughs> you like, you know what? Miller's pub, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> It was at this place where they make beer, but I didn't work for the place that made beer. I worked for the outside company they had hired to do their cafeteria services. Uh, adjacent. Adjacent. You know, so, so the yeah. outside company they hired to do the cafeteria services for the employees of this beer making place. I worked for the cafeteria folks. You know what I mean? So that I was in Texas. This is in Texas. Yeah, this is when I was in high school. High school. So um, I made the big batches of sweet tea, you know what I mean? You know, for all the people, help them ring up. They come through a little line. I did all that. That was my under the table gig. Mm -hmm. But after that, I worked, I was a waitress. And like, I did the whole Chili's. I worked at Chili's as a waitress. I worked at um, Subway, not as a waitress, obviously, but I, you know, I made sandwiches. You was a sandwich, uh, what do they call it, artesian? A sandwich. Oh, sandwich artist, yes. Yeah. Artist. Um, that's why I, that's why I learned how you can um, have workplace romances. That was ah, my first romance. That um, was your first workplace romance. My first workplace. Well, we'll get into that later. But okay, you know, okay. It started a trend apparently in me. That hmm. started a trend. Hmm. Um, I did so like I did so many different restaurants like at the different. I was told I worked like graveyard shift waitress at this all nighter diner place when I was in college. Um, I did work, you talking about like how you don't know what you're doing when they hire you, like at the bank. I worked for a place like, y'all know how old I am. I'm out there. I'm old, you know, old, old, a little bit old, but kind of old. But not real old, but a little bit old. But like DSL was still a thing. And like I've worked for the the people who fixed your DSL. So when you called in to say, hey, my DSL doesn't work, I picked up the phone and had oh, a wow. Of telling you what to do. You had a yeah, you had a script of everything of what to do. A pure script of what you do. And I used to get in trouble at that job because like when the old people would call, they they weren't calling because DSL didn't work. They were calling because they were old. They didn't know how to set up their email. And you're not mm. supposed to help them and stuff like that. And I got a grandma. I had two grandmas at that time. I gotta help the old people. So they got mad at me about that. Uh, yeah, I worked at the television production company. Like the, I worked for the, excuse me, the CBS affiliate. Ooh, I, you know, that was my first job out of college. I was very happy because it was like with my degree. Uh, then I went back to waitressing for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I like so. I I will say I. I should say I I'm I work with a temping agency so. That's why I've worked so many jobs um, now because I think I've worked way more jobs in the last two years than I ever have in the span of my career. Cause like I've worked for a rug company. I worked for a real oh, estate really? company. I know you, when did you work for a rug company? Real quick, real quick, real quick. Um, it, it was a, it's a rug company in a merchandise mart and they had hand stitched rugs thousands of dollars, you know, white people be eating that shit up. Okay. <laughs> and and I was just like at this I did not like my allergies was flaring up. I was like, um yeah, I can I can only do this for two more weeks. Y'all pay good, but no way, Jose. I didn't work for I, I worked for so I worked for at a club. I was I was one of the uh wasn't the bouncer. Hell no, I wasn't a bouncer. I was too cute. I was I was the one asking for your money, looking people up and down and judging them, trying to, trying to get as much money out of them. Like, hey, how you doing? Okay, okay, girl. Uh huh. It's just you and who? Is y'all mm -hmm. okay? Well, I'm gonna just do this for y'all only. <laughs> but it's gonna okay. be thirty dollars each. <laughs> 
Here's my question, Brandenburg. I want you to take a good sip of that black rum punch. And then I want you to give me your best yo black ass got fired story. Um my best yo black ass got fired story. I know your black ass got fired, at least from one of them 30 listen, jobs. Listen, I got yeah, I got a couple. Look, the, the funniest, <laughs> the funniest. Uh, the funniest I got my ass, my black ass fire story is I was working at Sports Authority, right? This is a Sports Authority one. I'm working at Sports Authority and a friend of mine, like I'm in a, I'm in the closet. There's a closet where there's a whole bunch of back stock, right? Mostly, okay. mostly Jordans and, and stuff that we don't like to keep out in front. Cause you know, it will be gone. You know, they shoes, they Jordans. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm standing in the middle of the uh, door and my coworker is in the back doing something. I'm like, hey man, what you doing? He's like, hey yo, I think there's a camera back there. I'm like, a hidden camera? Yeah, this is a, <laughs> this is a stock room. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And he goes, he goes, Adrian, does that look like a camera to you? I'm like, no, it's not a, not a camera. It looked like a bug. So I grabbed uh, a broom and I, cause there was a hole there and I, and I dug it in there. I was like, look, it's a bug. Look. And, and it wasn't a bug. Something had failed. Uh, I think it was a camera. Uh, <laughs> it was indeed a camera. So a, a week go by, here come HR and um, loss prevention come in and they, they sent me in the uh, room with the, the manager. And he was like, so have you ever, <laughs> Have you ever stole from us? I'm like, no, nah, I don't steal. What? What are you talking about? Uh, okay. <laughs> the last thing they see is you with a broomstick breaking the security camera in the stock room. Man, and the video was so hilarious because I'm like in the camera, like, <laughs> is this a camera? <laughs> it looked like a bug. They like, I damaged all the equipment. They was like. Uh, we're not going to tell you that you're fired, but you're no longer working here anymore. Uh, you no, can ass fire you. <laughs> I, I was like, so I'm fired? <laughs> like, I was, in, I was in high school. I was like, that's not clear to me. <laughs> so I, I can no longer come here? You not gonna give my check though, right? Oh no, they they gave me they gave me that little funky ass check, but uh, <laughs> I but it was so funny because as I was leaving, I was like, "Hey y'all, I'm gone, I'm gone." They did it. They did it to me. They asked me out. What uh what what would be your best firing getting fired? Your black ass fired story. My black ass did get fired once, but. I got <laughs> this bougie ass once. I'm out here saying I got fired. I, right, got, go I, got, I got fired once. But it, it, the thing is, like, to get fired would hurt my soul so much that even, in, even when I hate a job, I do well at it. Because I just, it would just hurt my soul so much to get fired. So the shut the fuck up. Even when, even when I'm doing my best and they say you fired, I'd be like, really? <laughs> I, did, I did my best though. I did my best. They like, no, nah, nigga, your best wasn't enough. Get, <laughs> <my> best. <laughs> Get your ass up out of here. I was uh, like, I also have to take it as like, I'm I'm young. You know, I was most of my firings was during high school and college. That right? would still break my heart. That would still break my heart. It just, it would just be, oh my goodness. I don't know. I, even thinking about it now, like, makes me shiver. Well, don't don't get it twisted. I did. I, I felt like when uh, they fired me at the bank teller, as a bank teller, I cried a little bit because I was like, but I like y'all. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, why would you fire me? <laughs> I thought we had an understanding that I don't do math, but you hired me anyway. I thought we was on the same page. Man, it was so funny during orientation. I was like, so <laughs> what we gotta do again? Oh uh, no, you want us to balance? 
Oh, no. No, no, I don't do that. Go, no, but go ahead. Go, continue on with your best black ass fire. Your one fire. My one story. black ass fire. And I know, I know what you're gonna say after you hear this story, but I'm just gonna be waiting for it. But it hurt me. So I work. This one I worked for. I worked for many lawyers um, as well. So after I left production, uh, working for the TV stations, I was like, I'm too broke. And this is, it was a boys' club where I was working. Like the city that I worked in. Uh-huh. The production community was very much a boys club and it was hard to get in. The things that I wanted to do, I couldn't get into. Uh-huh. And so I had the opportunity to move to Seattle, but I don't want to live in Seattle. No, thank you. So I said, let me just find me a new ass career. So I went to, I, went, I decided to go enroll in paralegal school, get my oh. paralegal associate's degree at the community college. Yes, you know, educated and shit. Um, And so I got a job as a runner, like that was the title of the role as a runner for this family attorney in the city that I was living in at the time. Oh, I don't like that title. Well, so, but you literally are a runner. So you do all the court runs, you do like, you know, you do all the filings last minute, like you, you literally are a runner. That That's what it's called. You I know. do admin shit too, but you're but a they runner. But they could have thought of a fancier name than a runner because because uh, for sh- in Chicago, a runner means uh, you a hub. Oh, I did not know that. She a runner, she a track star. Yeah. I did not know that. Well, damn. Yeah. Let me call somebody in Austin, Texas mm-hmm. and say this ain't going to work for me. Mm-hmm. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I, I was a runner for this um for this, this this family law firm for this specific attorney. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not going to say no more than that about this particular person that I work for. Mm-hmm. However, I was very ready to get out. So once I like got to a point where I felt like I've learned a lot, I've gotten this far, because I got that job because that, that was the time when I worked in two jobs. So I quit the production, I quit the television station. I was a runner for this attorney and I was also a, um, I took cookie orders over the phone. So I did this like cookie delivery place in Austin. <laughs> it's, it's really good actually but I took the delivery I took the phone orders and the online orders so I had so you were orders. seamless you were seamless you were caviar you were uber eats before it was uber eats got you you were doordash and shit I took the online and phone orders you know what Rev I mean up. okay you know all that good shit so I did that for the cookie place and I worked as a runner for the for the attorney and then as, when I got to the point where I was like, I feel co- I feel confident to start applying for like a litigation assistant or a paralegal role. I started doing that. I got a position with another family law firm that I absolutely love, um, still love to this day. And so I had to go in and put my two weeks notice in at the, the place where I was a runner. And so I went in there and said, hey, here's my two weeks notice. I did get a job as a litigation assistant at this other family law firm. So they were both family law firms. And the, the attorney like calls me into her office the next morning because I like emailed after I got the position, let them know, hey, straight up, here's my two weeks notice. I am out on this day. She calls me into her office in the morning, the next morning, and she's just like, do you know what a Chinese wall is? Do you know what you've done? I can't have you around my clients. I can't have you. You give all my information and then you're going to take all my clients. Bitch, I'm a runner. I literally run my black ass to the courthouse to file your pleadings, and then I run my black ass back. Who the hell? I can do a copy machine, and I'm just not the type of person who cannot work. Like, for me, not to know where my next paycheck is coming from, that gives me so much anxiety. So, like, you have to leave right now. Like, you have to, you have, your last day is literally right now. You have to leave. And Bradyburg, I had just made my breakfast sandwich. It was in the microwave waiting on me. Yo, I was like, like <laughs> oh. I was so hurt and like I tried to be like cool like, I understand and I went and I was so mad because I left my breakfast sandwich there and I should have took it with me in hindsight because I was fucking pissed but I went to the elevator and I cried so hard it was like I was quitting but then you fired me two weeks earlier I was so hurt I was so hurt Brandenburg I would have I would have the fact I know it affected you Deeply, because the fact that you still remembered that you had your breakfast sandwich in the microwave. 
much waiting on me. It was, I was like. Oh, I hate that. I hate when, when you, you like, you expect it. You just anticipating to eat that sandwich. I was and, ready. I was ready. And they just pulled that, they pulled it out of you. Oh. <laughs> I should have took my black ass back up that elevator, snot tears, and all of like, well, my breakfast sandwich. Man, I feel like I'm always, I, every time I get fired, uh, <laughs> I, every time you get fired, I, I, mean, I, think I, I think I got fired altogether, maybe like five times. Maybe like five times. Bank teller, sports authority, uh, I think I got oh oh uh DM systems that uh medical spot um that wasn't a firing that was a layoff oh that was a layoff you're right yeah, but I, I still I still feel like it was a firing and a firing you take so much more personal though you'd be like damn what's wrong with me but a layoff you feel like you had to make yeah, that that's true no no you're right I will say mm -hmm. it, it cut deep because I I got laid off literally on my way. To, vac to on my vacation. I was like, so you want me to sign off on this? I was like, yeah, I'm fine, but can I go? Because I got a plane to catch. <laughs> oh, Brandy Bird. I was on vacation, jobless, out here like, should I spend this money? What am I going to find? <laughs> How am I supposed to enjoy this vacation when I just learned that I ain't got a job no more? <laughs> so much when you're on vacation and you don't know if you got the money you thought you had. Man, I was out here about to, I was about to ball out of control. Okay, now I'm controlling my balling because I got fired. I got let go. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, so for those of us who are just joining us, um, our girl Jillian is out tonight. We made her famous black rum punch. That we think I might make another little round. Actually, I got a little bit left. I'm gonna pull this in here. Yeah, good man. But oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just like, and I, you know, did the measurements for my souls, and it turned yes, out we did. Mm -hmm. It turned out amazing. Amazing. I will say my favorite like quitting story. I will okay. say my favorite quitting story is probably when I I told y'all I got I had a thousand jobs. I did a month, about almost two months of um teaching, excuse me, teaching kids how to swim. Um I was a swim instructor for almost two months. I remember and, <laughs> and it, you know it it paid well, but also like I don't really like kids, and so I had to really look into my soul and tell myself, "What are you doing, really? Like, do you really want to do this?" Because I, I felt like during my time of working there, those kids, most of the most of those kids were very privileged, and their nannies brought them to the swim spot and listening to me doing their part for the community letting a black girl teach their kids how to swim listen because i also had to meet the parents or whomever they brought in and they were like you're the instructor yes like, yes mm -hmm. nigga. i was a i was a by the way i was a lifeguard in college <laughs> as well so and i had to save it i had to save a child because I had to save a child from drowning when I was in college. But anyway, that's what we need. You're the hero we need. Right. I'm the real hero, she-ro up out here. But anyway, I I took, you know, I took a, a, a moment and I realized, I was like, wow. Uh, they want me to work Thursday through Sunday with these mm -hmm. kids. And I don't think I can do this no more. So I constructed a very eloquent, nice email and by the way, I got hired by somebody who saw me perform and they loved me and thought I was funny. So they thought so they said you could teach people how to swim. So he got he yeah, he pretty much got me to hook up and I had to send the uh I gave them one week advance notice. <laughs> I was like, listen, what we not about to do is I can't work no more. I, I he, he he literally emailed me as soon as I came back. As soon as I sent him, he was like, "Uh, I'm sorry to see you go, but 
why are you leaving? I thought you was thought you was feeling it. I thought you was good. I, I made up some shit talking about I, I booked a role and and <laughs> and I I'm filming. It's just on the spot. I just didn't like them kids that I was working with. And I wasn't about to I wasn't about to go back. They were like, can you at least work your last week before the break? Nah. <laughs> I, I, he was like, can you just call me real quick? I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll call you and let you know if I can ask the the director. I, I made up some bullshit. I was like, yeah, they need me right away. Right away, gotta go. <laughs> gotta go. I felt so good. I was like, whoa. I know they were fucked I trying to find a replacement. They're like, can you find a replacement? Nigga, I don't work there no more. <laughs> what? I don't work for you. You find a replacement. Peace no. out. That's not my problem. Peace out. I felt so good because you don't understand. I was you stressed. You off your chest when you get rid of a job that you truly hate. It is oh. a weight off of your chest. Oh, I hated that job. With mm-hmm. every every bone in my body. Woo, I hated that job. I hated the- you know, you know that you truly hated a job or a company. It could be the it could be the actual role that you're doing, or it could be the company that yeah. you don't like. Um, but you know that you truly did not want to be there anymore. When you put your notice in, whether it be a week or two weeks, and that last week you just show your black ass. Woo. You know, quit this one job that last week. I was during my lunch hour. I was always going to get the happy hour margaritas. I worked the night shift at this joint. Uh, I worked from like 2 to 11 or something like that. Um, so my lunch time was legit like when they had regular after work happy hours. And I was just going to happy hours during my lunch break. I was like, ah, okay, it's cool. It'll be fine. I'm not this bitch. You know, the like when you truly just don't give a fuck, you say I wasn't supposed to. I'm, I'm a month past needing to be out this place. Man, <laughs> listen, you know, throughout uh, my moments of temping, I love temping because of the fact that I know there's a start date and an end date. Because I can, I can give them the best that I can give them for that little two week, three week span. I, I think I did. I think I did one temp uh, job for about six months, and I was I was like, damn, y'all like me, like me. But then they came out of nowhere when I was working, like fa- fake working, but uh, I was working, and they came up to me and was like, we got some bad news. <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna have to let you, you go. You know, we're not doing so well. Blah blah blah. I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> You know, cause when I when I'm tipping, I don't feel bad, cause I'm like, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be fine, right? Leave anyway, man. You got like another job lined up that you don't have to look for. Like they're gonna let you know when the job is ready for you. Uh, yes. You know, peace out. Thank you. I appreciate it. This was fun. You know. Okay. I want to get to to what my favorite topic is. Ooh, um, let's get it. Um, please definitely put in your comments, questions, all that good stuff. Uh, Babs Comedy, those just joining us. Jillian's out tonight. We made her famous Black Round Punch. We're loving it. We're feeling ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Get a little loosey goosey. Brandy Bird, I want to know about your workplace romances. Oh, Lord. I've had. Okay, so look, I, I can talk about it. And so I just want to let everybody know. <laughs> what is this disclaimer before? <laughs> because I feel like every time I say this, everyone gets so worried about me. But I, you know, it's I'm fine. I'm alive. I'm well. My oh, uh, yes. okay, yes, yeah. <laughs> See, okay. it's a, it's a romance, but I didn't know it was a romance. <laughs> romance. Okay, it was a romance, but I didn't know it was a romance. So. I told you I worked at CVS for seven years and I also tandem like the tail end of uh, working at CVS. I started my my first like out of school job. So during my CVS time, I encountered a FedEx carrier that took a liking to me and it 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 sparked into something that I would like to call stalking. 
And uh, so it started like he he wanted to uh, to re- get a picture, troubleshoot a picture, send a picture to. I was a photo tech, by the way, at CVS. I was a photo and tech. One of many jobs at CVS. Yes, one of my many jobs. At, <laughs> girl, I was I was a photo tech. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. at the, at this time. And he wanted me to help him uh, send a photo to our kiosk. And so his phone was jacked. I was like, man, just, and this is a service that I've offered to all the college students or kids. I'm like, just send the picture to me and I'll send the picture to the kiosk. So I gave him my number. We, we didn't have, see, this is why airdrop <laughs> is a thing now. Okay, <laughs> airdrop is a thing because you don't have to have my number to airdrop. But anyway, I gave mm-hmm. him my number. He sent me the picture. I was like, "Cool, innocent." Normally, what people do, they delete y- the number. Okay, not delete it. Stalker. Right, not my stalker. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. So this progressed into phone calls, finding me on Facebook, messaging me, voicemails. He brought his daughter in and was like, "Meet your new stepmom," and I was like. Hey, my I man. know this part. <laughs> yes, I'm. Look, he was like, "Meet your new stepdaughter," uh, daughter, and I'm like, "I'm checking out somebody right now. Can you, uh, <laughs> can you give me a moment, please?" No. And like, yes. And then so he would come in, and I, because he was our FedEx carrier, he would yeah. come in and drop off packages. And when he came in, my coworkers would be like, "Adrian, go to the back. He's here." I'd be like, it's time for me to go. It's time for me to go. Right. Or or go to the office or whatever. Like, I would just, I'd be like, uh, let me try to avoid him because he'll find me or what whatnot. So I know that like we're laughing about it on this because we've heard the story. Like in I mean, yeah. it, like obviously it's funny. We can not funny, but we can joke about it now. Yes, we can joke about it now, but we it was serious. It. it was serious because people yes. were like, hey, uh, He's kind of serious, and I'm worried about yeah. you. What's and going on? We were like that age, like that young. We didn't think about stalkers in that sense, right? And and mm-hmm. at the same time, I was also like, yeah, I don't want to poke the beast. I don't know what's gonna happen, so mm-hmm. let's not take this serious. Five years, five years later, I start my first corporate job. Find out he's also the FedEx carrier to my first corporate job. So my no coincidence. Mm-hmm. Right, because it's in it's in Evanston. It's on the same route. Okay, whatever, have you. So but my job took that shit so serious. It's like, hey uh who is this dude? Why is he following you? Why is he all up on you? This man proposed to me with a ring pop. He like brought me jewelry, brought me shoes and and I was like, all right, okay, now this is getting a little serious. My mom came in. Oh. Uh, my job, my job gave me self-defense classes. They started dropping me off, picking me up from work. That's and, good. That means right. they're out for you. And I filed a complaint. He got fired. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Went to the cops came in, went to court, did all this stuff. But you know, it's a it was a romance that no, I didn't it was not a workplace romance. <laughs> I was I was working. I was working during this time I had to avoid this nigga. And he was working too. So it was a romance. A workplace romance. So did you ever have like a real workplace romance or no? And to me, I thought I did, but like I feel like I always like kind of dug and like somebody at work, but they mm-hmm. weren't feeling the same way as me. So mm-hmm. I, you know, I gotta be cool with it. Like, hey, yo, what up, Doug? Hey, yo. <laughs> I love the punches. I love the punches. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> but I don't. Yeah, I don't think it was ever. It was ever a moment like people were like, oh, there. Look at the look at wife, uh, work wife and work husband. I don't. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that, but it's clear that you do. Please explain your romance. Okay, so yes, I, I got it. For a while there, I'm gonna be real with it. The last three real relationships I've had have all been workplace romances. 
Oh Lord. Yeah, but but please keep in mind that like my current partner and I have been together for eleven years next month. Like so, it, I got some space. You know what? Don't worry right. your eyes at me, Brandy. Brandy. Hum- humble brag. Excuse me. <laughs> Okay, look, Chicago almost broke our ass, so no, like that's a blessing. Okay, I'm, that I'm, is. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So, so from there, the person before that was workplace romance, and then the person before that. So the last three real, like real relationships, not like dates or you know, I'm horny, you're horny, but real relationships have been workplace romances, and the first, the first workplace romance I ever had was my. My first white boy. <laughs> I had never dated a white guy before, and he was like my manager at Subway. He he was looking at you, making them sandwiches. He was like, "Damn, girl, uh, the way the way you be." Cutting them six inches, them foot longs to six inches. Ooh. When I tell you, yeah, that's exactly how it went. Yep, that right there. That's exactly how it went. <laughs> but like, and that lasted like a year. And we're actually friends now. We're very good friends now. Um, but does he <laughs> does he ask you to make him a sandwich? Fuck no, no. We both got the hell out of Subway. <laughs> But that was like, uh, that lasted a year. And I was like, ooh, that's long. That was college. I, I, so my first college, I, went to, I transferred to another school, so two colleges total. My first school, girl, my first school was an HBCU. I went to Florida A&M. Mm. And I told my, I called my daddy and I'm like, feeling out, I'm, I'm testing the temperature of the water. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, hey daddy, so uh, what would you think if I, you know, dated a white guy. <laughs> and he was like, no. I said, okay, well, what if he's Jewish? Because this dude's Jewish. I said, what if he's Jewish? That's just another branch of the white tree. No. <laughs> like, daddy. <laughs> listen, listen, all black men, they have no couth or decor. No, okay? no chill whatsoever. I'm like, daddy, no chill whatsoever. But but check this out though. So that's that's the first the first workplace romance. The second workplace romance. I'm back in Texas. I transferred to Texas State. So I'm in San Marcos. Um, I'm working the graveyard shift at the all nighter diner, and I have a crush on the cute white guy in the back flipping the pancakes. You know what I mean? Second, I dated two whole white guys. Both of them were workplace romances. So the second one, um, he had a, I'm not going to say his name, but it was a full-on Irish name. Um, <laughs> full-on Irish name. O'Connor. But, O'Connor. Let's call him O'Connor. Yeah, we'll call, we'll call him O'Connor. So I graduate from college, and my daddy comes down, and my whole family comes down to San Marcos. It's like a three-hour drive, whatever, so not long. And then this, this person I was dating at the time, and his mother come to my graduation. We've been, we've been together for a year at that point. And my dad did all this shit talking about, I don't want my girls dating the white guy, I don't want that, da 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 He meets the mama, he flirting his ass off. You know what I mean? He's all like, yeah, you know, I've been uh, raising the kids on my own for a while. And I'm like, who the fuck are you? you he, know trying to, he trying to get his rocks off. Daddy said, he saw, yeah. So, you know, whatever, hypocrisy. Hmm. I, I will say, if, I will say my white boy excursion definitely came uh, from workplace as well. Excursion. Yeah, I had an excursion, had a nice little detour of white boys. um, And it was during work as well uh, as comics. Won't do that again, but- uh, Make them comics. No, I'm I'm good. No, I'm I'm golden. I'm, I'm, I'm set right now, so yeah. No, mm-mm. don't don't do it. I I would say, do you have like a most embarrassing thing that ever happened to you at work? A most embarrassing thing. I the one that comes. I'm sure I've embarrassed myself plenty of times at my jobs. I'm sure mm-hmm. I have. But the one that comes to mind is um, it was at the all nighter diner before okay. I was dating o- O'Connor. 
So before I was dating O'Connor, I was single and I was like just starting to date this one guy. And he he knew I worked the graveyard shift or whatever. So he actually came. So I worked, usually worked 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. So we would start like, it would start to clear out like fully around 4 Mm a.m. We would clean up between four and five, like really give it a good cleaning. Restaurants open, but no one's really there. So he came and chilled out in the main dining area, knowing I would get off in like an hour, I'd be cut and we could leave. Um, we're gonna do like early breakfast and some shit like that. And he's just sitting there looking, looking cute, chilling. No one else is in the restaurant, like the, the cooks obviously and like two other servers. Um, and I'm cleaning and I'm literally like picking up dishes from like tables that I haven't been clean yet, picking up like all oh, like busting the rest of the tables. And I'm trying to look cute, Brandon Bird. I thought I was so cute. I had my <laughs> swishing, like we're just damn like swishing them hips back and forth. Somebody had just mopped the floor. When I say I busted my ass, I busted my ass. Just it, it was a it was a full cartoon, like leg came up. You know what I mean? Leg came up. I fell down, dishes broke. It was a full Looney Tunes, old school, like cursed flat moment. And I just laid there like spread eagle, like it happened. Ain't no point in trying to get up and play it off. It just happened. I think we had one more date after that and it was a wrap. But my, my probably most embarrassing moment at work was probably an after work like, okay, so every year at my corporate job, we do like a sale, we get all of our sales teams, sales reps together, and we have like a celebratory, like, thank you for working for us, like mid, uh, mid uh, year celebration of all of the things that we've done. Mm-hmm. And, and so we're at the, we at a, um, a t- rooftop, like all you can eat, drink, uh, for a, at a Cubs game. We're watching the Cubs game at one of those yeah. rooftop places, and I'm there with uh, my white boy boyfriend. And this is like this is the year. This is the the year that I start drinking, and okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And it, it, it's so funny to me because I'm such a competitive person. So when I see people drink, I'm like, oh, we dr- we still drinking? Let's keep drinking. Let's go. But again, a year in, not really sure of where my tolerance is. I get slapped at work. I'm talking about no. people looking at me. I'm, I'm taking pictures with, with a sales reps. People looking at me. But they're getting slapped, too. But I'm also the only black woman. I'm the only black girl there, and I'm the youngest. And my my boyfriend at the time, he's like, "Hey, yo, uh, let me uh, let me uh, let me grab this drink from you." I'm like, "No, no, we're good. We're good. You froze on me for a second. I'm good." Oh, oh, okay. I what I was saying was, um, my boyfriend at the time, he's like, he's grabbing the drink, and he's like. I think you've had enough. No! You- no! <laughs> no! I did not. We we're like, oh, he's like, let's go. He's t- he's walking me down the stairs. I don't want to go. No! I don't want to go. And you know I- write sitcom episodes about. Yeah, it it was just so funny because I like I started crying. I was like, you don't even care about me. And I like the next day because it was a three day event. The next day, everybody's looking at me like, "Are you okay?" Yeah. I, was, I was like, I, "And you know me again." I was the youngest. I'm, I, I'm snap back. I'm spring. I'm spry. I'm like, what y'all talking about? I was fine. I uh, talking about the fact ain't nobody gonna forget that shit. <laughs> one of the one of the only black uh, reps came up to me. He was like, "Can I talk to you for a second? I hate that. I hate <laughs> that. I hate it with like sister, sister. That's exactly what he did. He was like, "Now you know we can't do that. They can do that all they want. We can't do that." I was like, 
to and you know again my young naive self i'm fine what 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 are you talking about i'm perfectly fine my boyfriend was there and and then my the ceo comes up to me he's like are you fine are you okay and he's like i was like yeah you know roy just wanted to chat with me real quick he's like i was like was i really gone yeah. was i really was i really slapped he was like yeah you kind of was yeah <laughs> you kind of was i was like oh <laughs> got it yeah, I, 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 when you said the only other black sales rep coach, I knew what you were about to say. I was like, they can do that. We they, can do that. Why is that always the conversation? Thank you for That's reminding right. me. Oh my goodness. And, and the thing is, like, like my mother taught me that. My father taught me that. My Amy taught me that. Like every black elder, you know, that I know that I respect that I know that's like you grow up hearing that like they can do ABC, you can't do ABC, D, F, J, X, Y, Z, you can't do shit, you know what I mean? Like that's how we're taught. Yeah, but in my head, I'm like shit, yes I can watch me. <laughs> Fuck, I'm, I'm from the north side. Fuck you mean? <laughs> Okay, Brandenburg, before we wrap up, my last question for you. This will be yeah. our closer for the night. Give me quickly one sentence, your best lie to get out of work. My best oh, lie to get out of work. Oh, I'm trying. Oh, really? I, I, I always feel like. No, it will be one you use, like a new one. Like it can be oh. creative, like lie you can think of to get out of work. Man, I, the, a good one is to be like, see, I just got booked for this gig and mm -hmm. I, it, it's a really big gig and I'm sorry, it's actually industrial. I don't know if you know that term, but Ooh, wow. an industrial is something that you'll never see, but, yeah. but I'm going to see them checks. Okay, yeah, you're fired. No, you're fired. Thank you. Oh, got you it. Thank you, bye. Okay. Um, what what's your best lie? Um, my best lie for you, one good sentence. Um, yeah, so my twin sister that I didn't even realize was still alive just called. She needs me to pick her up from the gas station. She doesn't have any money, and that's about three hours away. Ooh. I'm not going to make it in today. Mm. Oh, you know what I mean? You're not going to make it in forever. You're fired. I'm fired. I'm fired. Fired. Randy Berg, I loved it. Yes, this was fun. I mean, fun. but also like we made it our own. You know what I mean? You know, you know. So first of all, Jillian, thank you for introducing us to the ingredients for Black yeah, Rum Punch. Yeah. Brandy Berg, good job on letting the measurements come from our souls. Yes, I love this. It's you know, it's fantastic. Um, I loved hearing about. The, the firing stories, and I don't want you to be my bank teller at 19 years old. I just don't. I, I wouldn't want you to, I wouldn't want to do that either to your account, um, to your your soul, your heart. You wouldn't want to, you don't want to mm -hmm. handle a 19 year old. I'm not here for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will say, I love hearing your 50, about your 50 limb jobs and your white, your, your white bay experience slash workplace experience. I mean, yes. I like I said, um, the first one, still a friend, good guy, you know, Subway. You may not eat fresh, but you will get a man. Um, and then we just kept it moving from there. Apparently all my love is in the workplace. So I, you I, I, yeah, I mean it, you can only do what you can. It's prosper and keep it moving. All right. So uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you're still on the debates, we can't wait for you to watch us later. So we gave you this great show. For those who tuned in live, thank you. Yes. Love it, Maya. We love you. B, I know you're watching. We love you. So uh, thank you. Brandon, you got anything else? Yes. Please support Black women. Like, subscribe our YouTube page. Go on Facebook. Like this comment. Again, AB said, watch our uh, old shows if you haven't, get caught up.
Mm -hmm. Um, We will have more content for you. Look out for more fire black shit that we got for you. That's it. That's yeah, it. YouTube, Facebook, Babs Comedy, love it. Here we go. Bye. My hair texture is all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Yeah, I can get it. Right. We are strong. Black women. Black women.